Hey everybody, I am so happy that you came here to watch me and spend some time with me. Whether it's the first time you've ever been here or the millionth time, welcome and I am tickled pink to have you. Guys, I love each and every one of y'all that come my way and give me your time and watch my videos and I just love spending time with you guys. Now, this week was a very challenging video for me. Um, if you guys know me well, you know that there's times when I finish my projects and then I'll go back and start thinking, what if I add this and this and this? Well, this was one of those weeks. <laughs> so I had all my projects finished yesterday and I started doing my video. And then while I was laying in bed, I had those epiphanies of I could make it better. I could make it better. I can make it better. So then, this morning, I started adding to some of my DIYs, and then I added them onto the film here so you can, like, actually see what I did, and it makes sense. So, I hope that you like this video. Needless to say, this one was a lot of work for me, but I really did enjoy doing it. It is Vintage Inspired Kitchen Cottage Core Vignettes for resale. <laughs> that was a mouthful. So, yeah, um, I mean, everything that I do pretty much is vintage inspired because I love anything vintage. And I've been doing more kind of cottage chic type stuff. Well, this is more on the cottage core side. But anyways, I hope you guys like it. And I wanted to ask you too, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, hit that little red subscribe button and become a part of our family. It's totally free. All you got to do is hit that little button and there's a bell beside it. And when you click that bell, it'll say all. And YouTube will let you know every single time that I put out a video. And I would love, 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 love if you guys would watch my videos. I found out the other day that it actually matters how much time your subscribers watch your videos. I mean... Up until this point, I always thought that it was how many subscribers you have and, you know, the like buttons that show that, that you're liked, that people enjoy watching your content. Well, now there's something else to throw into the pile. It's how long you watch it. And most of my subscribers watch my videos an average of about 10 minutes because I can see on there. And, um... I try to keep my videos down, guys. I've been trying to keep them at 20 minutes because I don't want to bore you. I want you to be happy. I want you to be inspired by my stuff and not be like, okay, get to the end of it, Crafty Kathy. What do you think you're doing? You know, so I try to keep them as low as I can. Maybe I just need to cut, instead of doing like five DIYs, maybe do three. But then it's kind of hard to do vignettes because then it doesn't make sense. But anyways... Y'all let me know if there's anything that would make my videos better or more interesting for you. I'm always attentive and I always listen and I read every single comment. Even if I don't have time right at that minute to give you a heart or a like button. But just know that I do read every single comment. I promise I do. And I have two videos for you this week. Yay! Um, one of them is going to be for sublimation. That's tomorrow. And we're going to be doing cotton shirts. Um, and I'm going to show you how to sublimate on that. And then the other one is going to be this shirt. Peace, love, and Johnny. I know, y'all. I know. Everybody's tired of hearing about it. I'm tired of hearing about it. But he's still cute. And I like to wear him on my clothes. So anyways, that's enough blabbing for now. Let's get into this video. The first one is this little wooden spoon and fork that I found at the thrift store. And they had birds on them, so I had to get them. I brought them home, and the first thing that I did is sprayed it with about two coats of shellac because I was afraid that brown's going to come through. Then I used my Dixie Belle cotton color, which is white, and I gave it a couple of good coats. It probably took about three coats total, to be honest with you. You know, any time that you are working with wood and you're afraid that those brown tannins are going to come through, it's best just to put some shellac on it. I use the kind that you just spray on there and I buy it from Walmart. It works like a charm. The next thing that I did is I grabbed some of my IOD transfers and these came out of the Ephemeral Melange book. 
and it's the one that has like the little seed packets and that kind of thing so cute y'all and at first i thought this would be the cutest thing to put on these so i just put one on each one and you guys know the process by now i show you these a lot you just put it down like it's a sticker and use that little tool that they send you to rub it and then you burnish it by just rubbing the film that it comes on over it and it burnishes it it takes a little bit of the shine off and just helps it stick on real good well i did these up really cute y'all i put these little transfers all over it on the spoon and everything you know the whole time that i was doing this i did not realize this does not go with this vignette in the least so guess what yep this is going to be one of the ones that i'm going to change but i'm going to show you what i did at first because it was really cute too so after i got all my transfers on i sanded it down just a little bit and then i used this wood tint it's like a gray color and it's made by home decor i just used it the same way you do the waxes you wipe it on and then wipe it off and it's the same thing as the antique wax except for it is a gray color now at this moment is where i'm looking at it thinking what did i do this has nothing to do with the rest of my vignette oh dear it's an easy fix first i just painted it i took that color that is the dixie bell cotton the same color that i painted these with the white color and i just painted right over my transfers i made a little white wash and to make that i just put a little bit of the paint and a little bit of water and i just kind of went over that and for the most part that white wash did really well it just kind of knocked the color down and dulled it down a little bit but i still needed a little bit more of a heavy duty color so then i pulled out my dixie bell slick stick now it's a primer and you usually use that on things that are hard to paint but it covered the rest of it up like a dream. I've got a napkin, and this is the main kind of part of my vignette. It's these beautiful flowers, and it says something in French. It's just really pretty. So I wet the end of a little small tip paintbrush, and I go right around the image, and it just kind of rips off because you know you don't want those straight edges. You want them to be a little jaggedy. And if I'm going to put this gorgeous cottage core napkin on this set, I've got to do something with the little birdie at the top. He just wasn't cutting it for me because he was white. So I decided to paint him the Waverly color called Moss because it matched that little napkin to perfection. And that color is so pretty. So I proceeded with two coats over my birds and they were so pretty green. And now it's time to decoupage and i know you guys have seen me do this a million times so all i do is use mod podge and put a little bit of it down and i always preach that the most important thing when you're decoupaging anything is going to be saran wrap it helps keep the wrinkles down uh, most of the time you can get no wrinkles at all this was a little challenging because the spoon was concave so i really had to go over it a couple times to get the wrinkles all out but all i do is put down my mod podge and i always start from the center and kind of work my way down to the edges i'm so in love with this napkin it's the same one that i put on that wicker furniture that i did a few weeks ago it was like a little makeup table now i get all my napkins for miss Teresa. I'll leave her link in the description box below. So if y'all need any napkins, rice paper, that kind of thing, that's who you go and check out because she has great prices. I think it's like $1.98 for two napkins to be sent to you. I mean, it's really cheap. And if you want to even practice on your decoupaging, that's your perfect chance. But I have to say this napkin to me is just probably my favorite one that I've ever worked with because it's got all of the little parts that I love. Flowers, butterflies, birds. I mean, it's just got everything. Who could ask for anything more? <laughs> I had just a little overhang right here on the edge, but it's so easy. All you do is just take your little sanding sponge and sponge away 
from the image itself so you don't pull it back up and it comes right off easy peasy and then i always go back over and make sure that all my corners and edges are sealed because that's where you're going to get your best stick at and then like i said i like to use a nail file especially in small places like in the middle of this fork and i also use my sandpaper in like a 230 grit and that's all I did on this one, guys. I know I had to add a little bit to the end and it made it a little bit longer, but I hope y'all like this one. I think it is beautiful. The next project that I got started on was these beautiful bird candlesticks that I got at the church yard sale last week. You know I wasn't going to wait long before I upcycled these. So as you see, they're all black right now. I gave them three coats of my Rust-Oleum two times, and they turned out beautiful. And that's all I did with them. But we're going to make some candles to go on them. Because you know if I have candlesticks, I got to have candles. I'm going to decoupage these and you know that I just get a little bit of Mod Podge on my fingers and that helps pull apart all of those extra layers. Most napkins have three, I would dare to say, two or three. You just make sure you get down to that bottom layer and you know decoupaging, the more you do it, the easier it becomes and as long as you use that saran wrap you're going to be fine just practice i promise so many of you guys have been telling me i love to watch you decoupage but i can't do it and yes you can because you should see what mine looked like when i first started because i was too lazy to get the saran wrap and then i thought okay okay we're going to see what the saran wrap does and guys, it makes so much of a difference, but you just put your Mod Podge down in the middle, and that's where I start at. I stick my napkin down from the center and just kind of let it fall as it normally would. And then I use my finger and that saran wrap to get all of the wrinkles out, and they always, or 99% of the time, come out wrinkle-free. I used that same napkin, that cottage core looking napkin that I used on the fork and the spoon. That's the napkin I'm going to be using throughout this video. So I made one big candle and then one small candle. I like to do that because it gives a little variety and it gives your eye something to look at. You know what I mean? It's like it competes for the attention of your eye whenever you're looking at a vignette and you have a tall candle and a smaller candle. It just looks right. And so I made the bigger one and then I made the smaller one. I love to put napkins on my candles because I think it jazzes them up. And most of my candles I get from thrift stores. And this is one of the projects that I thought of the next day. I made up a bunch of molds and this is a mold from the Bird Song IOD mold and I put it on the big candle. I didn't paint my bird, but I did take some watered down antique wax and just rub it over that bird on that candle and just wipe off the excess. I hope you like these. I wanted to stop for just a minute and remind you, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, what in the world are you waiting for? We would love to have you as part of our community, and we always have tons of room and love. And don't forget to hit that little bell so YouTube's going to let you know whenever I put out a video. Now let's move on. I used my slick stick to cover up this big tin can that I got from a little convenience store. We've become friends with the guy and he gives them all to me. And look at this sweet little bird I got at the thrift store. I like the colors that she was, so I just put some white wax on her and wiped off the excess. And look how sweet she turned out. Meanwhile, I was just letting my tin can dry off. And we're gonna try this 
fabric paper that my buddy Teresa sent me. She said it's easier if you put this down before you do your napkin decoupage because it helps it, I guess, not have so many wrinkles. So we're going to try it out. I cut a piece of it off and I just mod podged it down to the big tin can. And don't be afraid to ask people like at convenience stores and stuff for their cans or bottles or whatever. Most of the time they're really nice and they will oblige. So yeah, I just took my saran wrap and kind of pulled this into all those little divots because that's what we want. And then I took my napkin and I laid it on the top and did my Mod Podge the way that I normally would. I just put down the Mod Podge and then I put down my napkin and I used my saran wrap like it was hugging that napkin real tight into all, and it pushes it back into all those little divots and it turned out so cute. I love to make these and put flowers in them and in my booth, these sell like crazy. And guys, I didn't even have to pay a penny for this tin can. You can do this too. Now this is the second day when I started thinking about adding stuff to my projects. I pulled out two of my molds. One of them is the bird song over there and it's just different birds. This one is called the trimmings mold. And you can make different, you know, stuff like at the top, like borders at the top of stuff, or you can make frames out of them. There's so much you can do. And guys, at Milton's Daughter, you get 10% off of any IOD product that you buy from her if you put Crafty Kathy 10. And I'll leave her link in the description box below because all of my subscribers get 10% off when you use that code. Now, these molds are so easy to use. I use the clay called DAS. I get it from Amazon. It's in my Amazon store, which is also linked below. And it's not very expensive. It's easy to use. You just kind of warm it up in your hands, and then you use your fingers. And the IOD molds are different than other molds because they have like a lip on them where you can push with your finger, and it makes the mold just perfect. I, there's no other way to describe it. I always put a little cornstarch down because it helps it not stick. And after I filled up all of my trays with the clay, I stick it in the freezer for about 15 minutes, and it kind of hardens it up, and it makes it so easy to pop out. On my trimmings mold, I did only put one piece in my mold. So I put a small area at the bottom to kind of make like a little border. And then I put the bird in the middle. And then on the top, I put another small piece to make another little border. And it just kind of gave it a little extra interest. I don't know. I love to add stuff like this. And you guys know I love to decoupage, so this was right up my alley. I always use tight bond glue because I think that it's the best for this stuff to stick. And when you first put it on, you just take a little piece of tape and wrap it on there and just set it and leave it alone overnight. But I didn't have overnight. I was in a hurry. So I went ahead and painted mine while it was still wet. I don't know if you're really supposed to do this, but then again, it worked. So I guess it's whatever works, you know? And I painted this that moss color because it made that napkin pop and it was the most beautiful color that just matched everything. Then I got the idea to take a little bit of my Debbie's DIY white wax and put just a little bit of my antiquing wax in it, just like a little tiny drop of it, like just very, very little. And I mixed it around and it kind of made it like a cream colored wax, which is exactly what I was going for. And I put this all over everything that I had just added to my little tin can, and then I just wiped off the excess. Now remember, this is just using one of those molds from the trimmings molds, and I just wasn't satisfied with this small piece. So I went ahead and made it go all the way across. I just could not stand it. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if I wouldn't have went all the way around this can. So I used more of the trimmings molds. It just took about a total of three, but I went all the way around that can with this. Then I painted it all moss green, and when it was all dry, I got that antiquing wax and hit it with it again, and this is what I come up with. 
It just felt like an incomplete project when I didn't finish all the way around the can. So even though I was pushed for time, I went ahead and completed it. I also added a little Dollar Tree ribbon to the top. The next one was super easy and it turned out really beautiful. I used my Dixie Belle cotton, which is the white color, to paint this cake stand. But I made sure that I put shellac on it. I put about three coats of shellac because I was afraid that brown color was going to bleed through. To show you just how long that I've had this in my stash, I got it at the thrift store for just $1.99 when things were so much cheaper. I just don't do a lot of kitchen decor. And actually, this one is going to be for my house because it's so small and cute. And I love this little cake stand. I got in my IOD transfer book called Brocant. And it has some beautiful transfers in it. And it didn't disappoint because it had that green color that matched the moss, Waverly moss paint perfect. And then this beautiful rosy color. And so I'm going to put this transfer down. Now you can still use this as a cake dish. You just have to put like a piece of wax paper over the top of it before you put your cake down. So to put my transfer down, I just laid it down and used that little tool to rub it off. And then I used the film that it comes on to burnish it, which is just rubbing it around the top. I used a sanding sponge in 230 grit sandpaper and just kind of roughed up the top of it a little bit. And then I used my Debbie's DIY white wax where I just rub it on and then take off the excess with my rag. Then I took one of those larger birds that I made from the bird song mold, and I'm going to put it on the front. Now, when you first make this mold, it's still pliable. So that's when it's good to stick it to whatever because it's going to mold itself to what you're putting it on. And I used my tight bond glue, put a little bit of glue on the back of it, and I'm going to stick it right on the side of my little cake dish. And this thing turned out so beautiful, y'all. I taped it down and left it alone for a little while. Normally, you would want to do it overnight, but like I said, I didn't have overnight. So I left it a couple of hours, took the tape off, and I used my antiquing wax and water mixture and just kind of ran it over my bird and then wiped off the excess. And that's all I did on this guy. Can you believe that we're almost finished? This next one is a little stand that I got back before those days. Also, it was 50 cents. And I used my slick stick on it because it's a primer. It's the best thing that you can use to make sure that you get anything that's hard to paint where the paint don't stick. And I gave it two coats of that. And then I painted it with the Dixie Belle cotton color, which is white. And I took the moss color and painted the feet just so it would have something different. Then I took my IOD stamp called Kindest Regards. This is the first time I've used this stamp and I was really, really wanting to use it on something. I didn't care what. And I put black ink on it and you just hold it with one hand and you kind of press your other hand around so you don't smush it and smear it. And I just think it's beautiful. It's like a a letter to somebody called kindest regard my plan is to set that tin can or my little cake stand on top of it 
and cover up the kindest regards. <laughs> it makes no sense. But anyway, so the next one and the last one is these three little bottles. I got these at the Hobby Lobby, and it's in their spring decor thing. So I got them pretty cheap for like two bucks a piece. And they're this blue color, which we can't do that. So I used my slick stick, and I put two coats on it because, you know, glass is kind of hard to paint. And this is what slick stick is for. It's a primer. So after my two coats, I gave it a coat of moss paint, and I love the way the moss paint just looks on these. It's so pretty. At first, I was going to do these a little different, and I taped them off and left the top part white and the bottom part green on two of them, and I really didn't like the way that that looked in the end, so I just made all of the bottles totally moss green. And I decided whenever I made these molds that I'm going to put a bird on the front of one of them. And then I used that mold called Trimmings Mold. And that's what I like about this. You can use it as a border or you can like kind of create shapes around things. And I created the shape that kind of, I don't know, in the end it almost looked like an eyeball. <laughs> because I went over and around the little um bird and then just kind of straight way under it and it almost made the shape of kind of like an eyeball but regardless what shape you think this is it really did turn out pretty i just used my tight bond to get it to stick on the back and then look how beautiful it actually turned out though On the next one, I went around it with a shape that has flowers on it, and I just kind of went around it in a circular motion, nothing really special, and used my tight bond to put it on there. Then the last one I absolutely love. It's almost shaped like a rope, and I put it around it, and I didn't want to go totally just around it, and I almost made it come down kind of like a little scar for a necklace. And then I got my Kindest Regards stamps, and you probably can't see this on film, but I can see it. And you just push it into the molds. And when I put the antiquing wax on there, it's really going to lay down in there. So I just put a little bit of the black ink on my Kindest Regard stamps. And I kind of rolled these in them so that it would, um, you know, create words on the bottles. And in some spots it smeared and I had to go back and fix it. But in a couple of little spots, the words came out really pretty. Then I painted all of these with the green moss color by Waverly. And I took my antiquing wax and ran it over the top part where I did the trimmings mold. And on the little bird and everything. And I just went over the whole vase actually and just wiped off the excess. Another really easy project, and I absolutely love working with those molds that are the trimmings because you can make these little shapes all around your stuff, and it's so pretty. Hey, if you stuck with me through this whole video, I just want to say thank you, and I appreciate every single one of you guys. Also, I want you to join me tomorrow at 7 o'clock when I'm going to be doing some sublimation. And I believe that you'll like that video too, even if you're not into sublimation. And you get to see Sabby's expensive gift that was sent to him. You're not going to believe it. He thinks he's a YouTube star. <laughs> <laughs>